Hey, how's it going everybody? So, I decided to make this video. It's an unusual video for me, but just like many of you guys are watching this, I was watching a bunch of videos on YouTube trying to figure out what what this is. Is basically what I have here is called a BCC basal cell sarcoma. It's a form of skin cancer at the beginning stage. And I was trying to find out what it is, how it how it gets treated options for it and you know there's there's some videos online um and but i feel like there's not enough mostly are older people um, there's a couple of younger people and uh anyways throughout the research i found lots of interesting things that i'd like to share share my experience uh, and share some tips and whatnot so anyways a little bit of, about me i was born in ukraine um, we lived in the farm and there's sun, but I was a little kid, so I wasn't spending too much, uh, too much time on the farm. The reason I bring this up is because mostly of my family has grew, grew up on the farm doing just stuff, being always on the sun. And, uh, some of them are still back over there and some of them are in the United States. And to this day, nobody has any skin cancer, the older, like my aunts and uncles and parents and whatnot, um, siblings. They don't have any skin cancer and none of them use sunscreen uh, including myself i never use sunscreen but now i have this so there's two conclusions that i came up to um for this is one when i was a teenager i would actually go to the tanning beds and i would go to the tanning beds quite often um you i could have 24-hour fitness uh, here i live in northwest now and mostly i work in alaska so there's not much sun here anyway um and so when you think about it like where where could this where this could have came from and so the conclusion i came up with is, is when i was younger younger person like i said earlier i would go to the tanning beds and when the, in, in some of the gyms you could pay membership and, and it'd be quite quite uh, cheap you know every other day i'd go in there and i'll tan um, and just do my regular routines and I would do this for years and so I remember back then going into one of those tanning beds you know they have time criteria you have to sign forms you couldn't go beyond 12 minutes or whatever it was um, couldn't go there the next day and I always thought out to myself like why is it such a big deal right and well now knowing that's a high exposure of UV that causes this and so it's cancer in general is basically a cell a human cell that went bad it got trauma damage that one trauma was there or some damage that cured and that cell turns into a cancer cell and what that is is basically a cancer cell becomes it goes into a survival mode and it could live forever um, and it just grows substantially it requires twice as much food fuel to grow and it just basically takes over the entire body and the things that have, one of the things I found really interesting about these cancer cells is they require certain nutritions to grow and one of the main nutrition is sugar um, they want sugar and they want carbs and so there's uh, throughout my research I found this really interesting doctor called Dr. Berg uh, he has little close to 9 million subscribers on YouTube. And he talks about nutritious, he talks about all kinds of fascinating things. And one of the things he talked about is how to starve cancer. So luckily this is not a big deal, but some of you guys are watching or know people that have cancer. And what this guy recommends is first thing to do is fast, go on a fasting uh, period. There's a lot of videos about that, and it's just remarkably what happens. He has several testimonies, several people on his show that had literally stage four cancers, and they beat it all. And so nutrition is a huge deal, and fasting is a major, major deal. So anyways, I will upload a couple of videos um, and pictures showing what it was. It was basically a, a, a spot. It started out as as a almost like a scar reddish scar and it'd been going like that for about a year and i um i don't really think anything of it because i have you know some scars in my face and so i was like ah, not a big deal but that scar stayed there stayed there 
and I believe last March, last last year March, that scar was just you know it's pinkish like a fresh scar, and I knew I never I know I didn't have any kind of um, reasoning for it to be a fresh scar, right? And so that scar started to after like I would take a hot shower, or rub my face with a towel, that scar would minorly bleed just a little bit, and so I was like, well, this is not good. So I went in there, and first thing they did is they froze it. It's just basically some sort of tube. Uh, they they put it out there on a the spot and the doctor says, well, if we freeze it, we uh, will never know if it is cancer or not. Um, if it goes away, then it goes away. And if it was cancer, we will never know it without the biopsy. And so, or we have to cut it and send it to a lab and then you have to come back here. So I said, you know, screw it, freeze it away and we'll see what happens. So that's that's what they did, they froze it. I'll upload a couple of pictures of those, those, how it looks like. It literally looks just like a red mark, somewhat swollen and um, and then within a month, it went away and that scar came back and it was started as white scar and it came back as pink. I said, you know what, maybe it's still there. Let me just go do by autopsy and see if it's still there. So they did. Um, and they came back and they said it's a basal cell serenoma, which is a pre-stage cancer. There's there's three of them um, uh, out there, and there's multiple layers of basal cell ser serenoma. And I believe there's like 12 or 15 of just that. And so, anyways, they said, well, we'll do the MOAS procedure, uh, where what they do is they cut a layer and cut it in four squares like a pie, and look under the microscope and see if they got anything, and then do it again. And that's what I had literally 24 hours ago, uh, yesterday done. And this morning I took down the bandage and just took a shower. And this is how it looks like. So the the, the procedure was was all right. I mean, no complaints. Um, I Right off the bat, I told the doctor that I have an anxiety. I said, this is gonna be, I'm gonna have a panic attack. This is gonna be crazy. So they gave me some pres prescription. Uh, I think it's uh, volume five milligrams, I don't know what the actual name for it, and they, you take two pills, it was only to give two pills, take two pills uh, about an hour prior to the procedure, and I went in there and I felt, this was the first time taking this, this drug, so I felt fine, felt a little drowsy, but I felt fine, I just stayed calm, and in fact, I was able to record some of these videos that I will upload, so disclaimer, they're a little somewhat graphic, but you know, it is what it is. I was able to record these videos, sit there, look at it, and uh, not have any major issues. Um, and so I was able to record these videos and, um, not, and not freak out. So that's tip number one. If you feel like you need something, make sure to tell them. Um, the doctors, the nurse, prior to scheduling this appointment said she has any, have no problems you know, prescribing this if the doctor prescribes you prescribes if not not right so worth asking so anyways they did a procedure it's pretty fast they numb you with needles and they use the little tiny vibrator so it kind of distracts your face from that needle and once that was done she comes in she does the one scoop and I, uh, I literally after that I just you know I sat there on my I brought my phone I brought some headphones thinking you know I'm gonna be on the you know listen to some stuff on the internet whatever so I sat there for maybe 10 minutes and I was just tired. So I just reclined their chair and I fell asleep. They come back in and she says, we got most of it except one bottom spot. We need to take one more spot. So I said, that's fine. So they gave a couple more numbing, numbing uh, medicine, took that out and left. And uh, in fact, I, I asked them, I said, hey, can you guys look at this spot and hit this spot? So they, they uh, they took that spot and sent it out to a lab to see what it is. But anyways, once this thing was done, um, luckily I had a plastic surgeon lady who was doing the surgery. And so uh, they made a circle, cut out the circle, but she says, you know, because it's on the round face and you smile, it tends to pull the face you know, this way. And so they basically kind of closed it up like this. So the scar won't won't be so noticeable obviously it is noticeable right now because it's been literally not even 24 hours 
and anyways with the this so what one of the other things that i found were interesting there while talking to the doctor i asked her well is this common and she says in her 30 years of practice and she's a she's a doctor in her so is her husband. She says in thirty years of practice, she'd never seen an uprise in a younger g generation with this kind of stuff. And I asked her as well, what was the youngest person she ever seen? And the youngest person she ever seen was sixteen years old with uh, melanoma, and uh, the person is got treated and is well and alive now. But it just shows you that this is a serious condition that is uprising in a younger people. So moving forward from, from this experience, there's a couple of things that I would recommend to people, you know, wearing sun hats, not just the sun hats. So I have a couple of sun hats here that I went bought on Amazon because I just went in there and typed in clothing UV rated so you could see that this hat is a UV rated 50 and it's not expensive. I believe it's somewhat 20 bucks, 16 bucks or whatever. There's different designs, different colors, and this is, I just got it. So it needs to be broken into, uh, but there's clothing like clothing that you wear and it's literally says UV, UV protected. Um, I bought a sh long sleeve shirt that I wear because I'm always out in the sun. I'm always out in the boat. Here's another hat. Um, it doesn't say anywhere here that it is UV protected, but I just got it at a sporting sporting store just to wear wear around. And another thing too that I would like to mention is the sunscreen, right? Like I said earlier, nobody really wears any sunscreen, and so I started wearing sunscreen because I, I, I I'm I'm out there fishing all the time. I'm, I'm driving my boat. There's a lot of glare. Sometimes it could get pretty gnarly. Or if I go to Mexico or Arizona, I put on some sunscreen. And so what I do, or what I did, I should say, is I use this brand. It's an easy, easy spray. You spray it around and you're just good to go. Now, now Banana brand, they actually came out and said that themselves saying that it causes cancer. Right, and so then the question is, what do you do? Do you get sun sun damage, or you put on the sunscreen that causes cancer? It's you know, what I do is now I found better sunscreens, and so one of the sunscreens that I found, just we just recently picked this thing up. It's from our Trader Joe's. It's an organic store we have here locally. It has chemicals, obviously, but it has a lot less chemicals. And there are better sunscreen out there. You just have to find the right ones. And uh, it's worth paying the extra money and uh, having, having appropriate sunscreen. Another thing that I found from listening to this doctor, uh, Dr. Berg, is skin, particularly skin cells, they need vitamin B3. And, they, and also you need niacin. So this dosage, of niacin I feel like it is high but I can tolerate this uh, what happens is your skin starts kind of feeling like it's burning it could be a little red uh, tinglish but what happens is, is it kills all these bacteria that's in your in your cells on your skin so uh, try this out at least look look, look for some you know um, non-GMO, gluten-free, you know, medicine, uh, medicine or uh, vitamin B, B3 particularly. Um, so that helps. And um, I would like to touch one more base is, is, so a lot of these videos that I watch, you know, people have them on their nose, their ears, they're literally cut off half their ears, ridge of their nose. So it's really important to wear UV protected sunglasses and these particular hats because Yes, it's not fun cutting things out, you know, if it's on your forehead or on your cheeks, but I'm um, definitely would probably suck a lot more to cut on your lips or on your nose or ears. You know, there's there's a lipsticks or a, not lipstick, but just basically UV protected for for your lips. You know, you put that on there so you wouldn't you know, you wouldn't have to be like, running for that exposure. Um, so anyways. Hope this video helps um you know it is what it is um just avoid the tanning beds 
take vitamin B B3, uh, wear, wear, wear hats, you know, UV protected hats or just hats in general, because the sun does penetrate the clothing actually. So I know a lot of people know that or not, but it actually does penetrate the clothing. So do those things. And uh, in general, sun is a good thing. Sun provides vitamin D, sun kills the bacteria. You need the sun. Um, but excess am amounts of it, like is it, if, if you're not in that geographical area, like for example, in Mexico, where it's during summer it could get scorching hot or Arizona, right? So stay out of those places. But anyways, good luck to you guys and stay positive. And um, the good thing is, is you know, you catch it early and get it out of, get it, get it out. And I just move on forward and hope that this video helped for you guys. And I will upload some videos and pictures um, towards, you know, towards the end. So there is a cream out there called Fluor, Fluor Cell Skin Treatment. It's F-L-U-O-R-O-U-R-A-C-I-L skin, skin treatment. And that's one of the treatments you could do on your face. And what it is, is basically it's a 14, two to four week treatment. You put it on your face and within day four, it, it starts to uh, blister up. And what happens is these skin, skin, skin cell uh, cancers would start actually burning and they come up on the, on the face and literally would, your face would look like a rashed tomato. It looks pretty, pretty nasty, but that is another treatment out there that I found uh, people do. Um, but if you have a natural spot like me, then you just might as well just get it out. But if you have tiny spots, uh, that is the uh, the route to go. You'll avoid uh, obviously scars. Um, so worth worth noting. And this photo is that scar that I was talking about. You could clearly see it's kind of pinkish. And in this photo, the procedure, the freeze procedure has been performed uh, literally within a couple of hours. And that's how it looked like. In this picture, the swollen has gone away and it's about four, four weeks. And that scar just reoccurred. Yeah. Yeah, we're not. That's crazy. And this photo is the first attempt that they just did. And in this photo, the outline is how she was going to sew it up. So this is after the second attempt. And the reason for this is because that scar is going to be literally on the round part of the face. Share your story. Just getting that little jump there. Yeah. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. I know. I got a clipboard. I know, right? Gotta put it on the computer.